Hey everybody, welcome back to the Electric Supercar Channel. Uh, this week we're going to start off a little bit with some uh, older footage from uh, trying to figure out the battery modules and those issues and got a little bit more for you on that and we got a couple odds and ends to fix up. So let's get to that build. All right, I feel like I need to do a little recap on battery pack two. So several months ago, uh, I had both packs uh, wired together and ready to test with the BMS. And the BMS would kind of, two cells weren't working. It would just kind of flicker between them. And So I've uh, got a lot of things going on here in the second pack. Um, I can't even type in any commands. It just keeps on like, going back and forth between, uh, I think cell 84 is in a low voltage condition, and then it says it's okay. And it keeps going back and forth. Anyways, we thought it was potentially the BMS, so we swapped out for a new BMS. All right, so I'm gonna plug in the last BMS uh, one more time and turn on the power, hit show cells, and then power down. So again, hit show cells. It already said it was in over voltage condition, so again, I don't know what the heck's going on. There's nothing I can do. It just seems to be variable, like it's jumping around. Just in a matter of seconds, it's changing all around. Because it was 5.3, then it's 4.3. Come down here, and it's two. So again, I don't know if this is a battery module issue or a BMS issue. Again, this is the brand new BMS. That didn't solve it. So did some additional troubleshooting. Um, again, this took a very long time. Uh, again, just not super responsive on the back and forth. But uh, they finally concluded that it was indeed a bad battery module. They had me, uh, part of the troubleshooting, I, I took the face off, did a whole bunch of tests, looked at things. So I'll show you some of that. All right, so I got this whole uh, plate here off. Um, you can see that there's uh, clips that go there. So there's four. So essentially there, 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 and there. So you just squeeze them together and this comes out. And this is what it looks like. So I thought about, um, again, it looks like there's some clips here and pulling it out. Um, just looking at the way they manufacture though, I don't know. They, they've got, this one is kind of tied into there and so these ones come out and it looks like they're welded on. So they may have manufactured it such that those come out and then they weld so you really can't separate them. Maybe you can, but I think this is all I need. So I can kind of get voltages from these various plates. And so um, the one that I'm having trouble with is this bottom pin. And that corresponds to this top right here. So anyway, uh, they finally said, okay, yep, it's the battery module. We'll send you out a new one. Uh, so that was last week and I followed up today and they said, oh yeah, here's your tracking number. And I looked at it and they had just generated the, the label today. So not the most responsive. Um, it's been a little frustrating, but maybe it's just me. Maybe my, I've got really high expectations. Anyway, so battery module, the last one's coming. We'll put it here, uh, get these all wired up and hook up the BMSs. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the backstory and we're getting close. All right, one of the other things I'm looking at is, um, this is a touch screen that you can change things, but um, I've also got wire outputs. So I've got uh, four wires up here, those green wires, and those will uh, allow me to select through the gears, uh, drive, neutral, reverse, and park. So I'm not sure which is which. I got uh, these labels all printed out. I'm gonna go ahead and put my foot on the brake, and these are, uh, I think the wires are you bring them to ground and that'll switch them over. So I'll go ahead and try those and make sure they all work. Okay, so that one's dry. So that one's reverse. Alright, um, remember how I said uh, 
think 99% of the problems are my fault. So I just saw a comment from uh, the Pantera Electronics, the guys that make this is the electronic parking brake controller. And they said based on uh, green light being there that they thought I had my 12 volt constant and 12 volt switch uh, swapped. So um, I'm gonna go. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and switch those. And I, I did confirm that they they were swapped. So I'm gonna switch that and see if uh, the parking brake gives me some better results now. So go ahead and turn this on, and then we'll uh, see how the parking brake responds. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn this one, see what happens. So that one closed. No green light though. Try again. Kind of just sounds like just this back, just this one's working, not that one. So maybe we didn't get everything solved. Hmm. We'll go check out, see what the controller, it's got some lights on it. See what the uh, controller says here. So again, we've got power, we've got switch. So I'm guessing this means they're both open. And then we'll go push this one. And so it says it's red, but see here we just have just the one, just the one that's on the right one's not working. So this guy is not working. So maybe, maybe there's something else going on. So there's a theory that perhaps the, uh, call it the uh, motor, for the parking brake was kind of jammed or stuck shut or open. Um, in this case, uh, the left side there, driver's side was working and this side was just not, it was stuck open. So um, the manual workaround is essentially, there's, uh, I'll call it the positive and negative wires that go to the motor. You can just use a 12 volt battery, it's like from a tool and just, uh, use that to open or close it, uh, again, in a pinch or something. In this case, I'm just wondering if somehow it got stuck open. So, I've touched it, so the motor works, it's not jammed. Um, we're gonna go see, we're gonna, we'll hook these back up and see if we've got any other issues or if that's corrected everything. All right, so I reconnected my battery. Go ahead and turn it on and then, uh, I'll turn the controller off just so the fan and everything isn't blaring. Then we'll try out the parking brake. Okay, so shut that off. So here we go. Fingers crossed. Okay, so I heard two that time. So left and right. So let's see if it opens. So it says it's green. I think after I switched uh, the 12 volt constant and switched, um, it took a little bit for it to kind of relearn, um, kind of the, I'll call it the calibration force or whatever, but it seems to be working now. Both calipers seem to be working. Um, I don't say that too loudly because maybe, maybe we haven't tried it enough, but for right now, we're gonna call that a win. All right, so after some uh, heavy driving, I kind of looked at uh, things like the brake lines, I also looked at the coolant lines, and I've got just a tiny, anyways, it's moist coming out of here. So I looked at the batteries, uh, the battery modules underneath, and even opened, popped open the cover just to make sure, and everything's dry, because I was really worried that it leaked on there, but, um, so I have to find out if it's like a little slit in the hose, or if it's this uh, brass fitting that's leaking, but I've gotta, gotta take care of that. I got it all uh, repaired. I wasn't sure which one it was, so I kind of cut off a section of tubing, just in case it was kind of a little nick in the tubing. And then I got a, another T 
Um, this one I don't have the uh, on off valves, but uh, that was really more for bleeding and anyway for, I'll call it development. So now that we're kind of all set, I don't know that we'll need that, but uh, we can always put it back on if we need to or get another one. Okay, one of the other things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and adjust the suspension, both front and back. It's just extremely low. It's around well, like a four inch clearance. Um, I looked it up, like even Ferraris and things have over five inches clearance. So um, I'm gonna try and raise it up so we get at least one more inch. Um, that'll also help getting it on and off the, the lift. And yeah, we'll see what, we'll see what we can do. All right, these front shock absorbers, they don't really match the same yellow as the calipers, which I want them to match. And they've got a, a separate can, I guess I don't know what you call it, but reservoir for the fluid. And so I can't get the spring off unless I take that reservoir off and I'm just, again, all the fluid come out and who knows what else. So I'm just gonna paint it without taking it off. And I thought, well, then why take it off the car? So I just got it all taped off and I'm gonna go ahead and paint it. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I, I spray the top once. Once it's dry, I'm gonna flip it over both sides again, and I'm gonna do two coats. We'll see how it turns out. This is the finished product. Again, probably doesn't look too different, but you can see the uh, calipers match the springs now. So that was the goal. I added about an inch of ground clearance here in the front, so I'm gonna do the same thing in the back. I did the back as well, so now I got the front and the back both raised up an inch from where it was before. All right, so the low clearance, um, I was just struggling to get uh, on and off the lift here, even though I had some pretty long ramps. Um, this isn't really scratching the fiberglass, it's just the, uh, it's just the rubberized undercoating. Um, there and there. So, uh, raised it up and I might kind of take some sandpaper, kind of even it out and then spray another coat on. Probably hard to see, but just give it a light sanding and added another coat. Um, obviously I'm not gonna do this uh, again and again and again. Um, the thought is just as I'm trying to dial in the suspension and stuff, I just wanna see how much and where I'm scraping. I also decided I want the uh, the door back on, the hinge. Um, I'll show you here underneath. The thought is I still I still want kind of this part of the battery modules covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the door on, put the hinges in, even though I've got this, this is the battery tray for the other modules. So again, I don't really need it other than just to cover cover that area right there. All right, I got the uh, back panel in. So again, this is really just kind of keep elements out of here. Um, it's still able to swing open and get the battery modules out. I will have to, if I want to get these modules out, I'll have to take this one off. So I'll have to take those two modules out and then unscrew, I think, four, I, don't, I can't remember how many bolts, but a couple bolts there and then take that out and then this door can swing open to get the other modules out. I am doing my wiring from my, what is it, over there. So from my onboard charger to my high voltage box. And um, the, the wiring they gave me was actually 12 gauge. That wire that's coming out of there is 10 gauge. What I'm actually gonna do is, I just have some leftover uh, battery cable, which is six gauge. So that's gonna be a lot safer than this 12 gauge. So I just gotta get, uh, couple splice points, one's right there, and then I gotta make some connections in and out of the fuse and to the positive and negative terminals. So I'll get working on that. All right, got these uh, cable ends on. That's for this guy to plug into the onboard charger. And now I'll get onto the other, I'll measure the lengths and then uh, do the other ends.
All right, here it is connected. Again, this is the uh, 10 gauge, this is the six gauge. So again, I think that's better than going smaller over here. So, and I just had this uh, extra. So we'll go ahead and get it routed back and get things connected. All right, I got all my uh, cables made. So negative will just go straight to the negative contactor there. Positive, I've got split because I got this fuse that goes in between. And I put a new hole in my uh, high voltage box there. So the wires will go through there. Um, I'll go ahead and get everything connected and hopefully show you the finished product. All right, so we got it uh, somewhat fixed. So again, this is the positive coming over here, the positive contactor, uh, the negative. Oh, I, I still need to. The negative's right there. It needs to come to right there. But essentially it's going through that spot and I've got it all kind of wrapped all the way back to the onboard charger. So let me get that one hooked up and then it'll be done. All right, now we have it. So coming from here um, through there, and again, I got the negative one connected there. So um, might do some quick testing, but then I'll put the top on and hopefully we don't need to open up this box for a long time. So again, here testing the charger. So right now we're less than, what is that? Less than 80%, so it's giving us the red light. But again, the fan's going, current's going. So uh, we're good. Right now I've just got the uh, charge wire coming up here, up this frame rail, over to here. And then from here, like I said, I'm probably going to put it out the back somewhere. But uh, for right now, it's just easy to use house voltage. So eventually, um, like I said before, we'll uh, wire up this one to it. But for now, until we get kind of a charging station, I think we'll keep it like this. So wired and tested again, so everything seems to be good. High voltage is good, 12 volt systems are good. So we'll go ahead and power down and uh, button things up. Okay, got the uh, lid back on, um, got everything kind of tested out, so I think we're good. Um, the only wires we still have coming out of here, so we've got, um, so this is kind of the power and ground for the BMS. These, this is the pilot and proximity for the charge port. And then I've got just a couple extra power and ground just for future use. So um, other than that though, everything's kind of tidied up and put out of the way. So I think we're looking good. All right, that does it for this week. See you next week.